Cat43, I thought I would do a screencast to try and help us with this discussion post, but I want to kind of connect it back to a problem that we did in Chapter 3. So I, I picked out Chapter 3, Example 5, and I'm going to go through the beginnings of Chapter, not Chapter 5, um, Example 5. And then right here, I literally, this is just me doing screenshots um, from your discussion post and sending them over to this, this little screencast. So I'm going to go through those last four questions just so we can start to connect the ideas in chapter three to this discrete random variable in chapter four. So with that, let's remind ourselves of what started us in chapter three. It says an experiment consists of randomly selecting one digit from a table. What is the sample space? So I, I put our little random digit table here and I'll just pick a highlighter. I'm just gonna push my pen here. Oh, that was a mess. But you can kind of see I highlighted some twos. That looks like the digit that was highlighted. And I could do that a bunch. And we could make a list of all of the digits. And admittedly, I should only be getting one digit at a time. But um, let me see if I can make my highlighter really small. Maybe this will work if I do it this way. That might be too small, but I hope you start to see the idea. I'm down here on the bottom row. Where I'm going with this is my sample space here, or at least what we were using, we were using that term sample space in um, chapter three, I would just say I could get the di um, digit zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So if I was gonna pick one digit at a time, right, those are my 10 options. I would have to pick one of those digits because those are the 10 digits that we have out in the real world. And then it says define A as selecting a number less than six. So what outcomes are in A? Well, if here is my entire sample space, if I want a number less than six, that would be zero, one, two, three, four, or five. All right, and keep in mind, this was just us counting back in chapter three. We're, we're um, extending upon that in chapter four, but I just want to remind us. And it says define um, B as selecting a number greater than two and at most six. And this phrase, at most six, that means six or less, right? But keep in mind, I have to be strictly greater than two. So B would have three, four, five, six. Now, where I want to connect what we did here with what we do in chapter four is I want to make a PDF, right? This is a discrete numerical variable. It's numerical because there are numbers in my sample space, and it's discrete because I could count those numbers. So what I could do is I could list my sample space in my top row. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, right? So that's me starting to connect, again, what we did back here in Chapter 3. Oh, my highlighter is really small now. Let me make that a little larger. What we did back here in Chapter 3 to what we did in Chapter 4. And we can go further. We know the probability of this. Now... I didn't give you the probabilities for that bottom row, but we can count them. Each digit has the same probability of being selected. Each of these probabilities, so the probability for any one digit, right? what is the likelihood that I would get a zero or a nine or an eight, whatever? It's always one out of 10. There are 10 digits in there and I've got one chance. So this would be one tenth and it's basically a uniform probability. Now, because I don't want to write fractions, I'm going to change that over to decimals. So let me write 0.1 in each of those. All right. And give me a moment. Oh, gosh. I think you get the idea. And of course, these here should total. Oops, I'm going to run out of space. Yeah. I'm trying to write the word total uh, one there because every sample space would. All right. So then I want to talk about, well, we, we actually did what outcomes make up event A. We talked about it, right? And then calculate the probability of A. Well, if I want the probability of A, that's the probability of getting, I would say, a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 3. Let me keep going. Or a 4 or a 5. And you don't have to write all of this out, but I don't want to skip steps just, just yet. Now, all of these events are disjoint, meaning I can't, if I'm selecting one number, I can't at the same time get a zero and a one, right? I can't have both of those happen at the same time. They're disjoint. And when events are disjoint, you just add their probabilities. So what I mean by that is if we want to include zero, one, two, three, four, and five, I need to add their probabilities. So I'm going to go add 0.1. Oops, let me do this. 
my my pen's not working. Let me try again. Oh, come on, pen. I'm halfway through this. Oh, there. I think it started again. Welcome to my world. Oh, I can see what's happening. It won't let me do it, I think, because I copied a picture over. Okay, so let me go back to the pen. I apologize. So what I want to do is I want to include 0.1 for 0, 0.1 for 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say this is 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1. Oh gosh, hold on, let me undo that. I think we have to do another plus 0.1 and then I should have one more. So I basically have six of those because I have six outcomes in there and I get that this is 0.6. Now back in chapter three, when we did this, we just said there were six outcomes, right? If I wanted to get to the probability of A, we said there were six outcomes out of our sample space of 10 and that got us to 0.6. And this is just this one down here. This is the chapter four version of that. So for B, right, if I want to do probability of B, and I'll change it into a, a different set of, of colors just so we can distinguish this. If I want to look at B, that's three, four, five, six. So I want to include the probability for three or four or five or six because they're disjoint events. I just add those probabilities. You can see that there are four of them. So I'm just going to say this is 0.4. And again, back in chapter three, we said, well, if we look at the number of outcomes in this sample space, or in this event space, excuse me, it was four out of our sample space of 10, and that's how we got 0.4. Again, totally legit. I'm just trying to connect this idea from chapter three to chapter four. All right, so now let's go ahead. We've got, and let me just make sure I'm clear here. This is what we were calling part C from your discussion, and this is part D. So let's move over to E. This is asking, what's in A and B? So A and B, right? Anytime we have an, excuse me, an and, we need to look for what they have in common, right? This is overlap, right? So and is always the overlap, and B, excuse me, or is when we combine. And we'll combine in the next part, but let's look for the overlap. So if I look at my events in A and my events in B, what outcomes do they have in common? Well, let's take a look and let me switch highlighter colors. Uh, it looks like they have a three in common. They have a four and a five. Okay, so in terms of what outcomes are in A and B, it's three, four, five. And then if I wanna get the probability of A and B, and let me again switch colors. It looks like I've done red and green, so let me, I don't know, we'll go with um, purple. So if I want probability of A and B, and we have 3, 4, 5 in there, I want to do 0.1 here, 0.1 here, and 0.1 here. So that would just give me 0.3, okay? And then I'll put F, since I have this little chunk in the middle, let's put F here. So if I want A or B, I need to combine my lists, and I don't need to worry about repeats. So if I want to make just a giant list of all of my outcomes, it looks like I have zero, one, two, three, four, five, just from A, and then B will add on six for us. And then if I want the probability of A or B, all right, so let me pick one more pen color, and what do we feel like, blue? So A or B, I need zero through six. So I need this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And if we look at that, that looks like there are seven numbers actually in there. So when I go to calculate this probability, it's basically seven times 0.1 if I add all of those up. So if I want to write it the long way, it'd be 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1 plus 0.1. I'm going to run out of room. Plus 0.1 plus 0.1. I think this is the seventh one, right? One, two, three, four five, six, seven, yeah. And so that would ultimately add up to 0.7. You can, you can just write 0 0.7. The, the whole point of this was just for you to be able to see how a problem from chapter three, again, chapter three, example five, can be worked through in a chapter four manner and we can, we can answer those questions. So I hope that helps a little bit for the discussion. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.